So first I'm going to show you some airport investigations, actually my diploma work back at university. I was interested in uh, shorter ways and creating the most compressed airport. As uh, many of you already pointed out in their already previous presentations, this is uh, kind of what everyone wants and uh, I'll bring you some magic now. I, have, I think I have a good solution for that. <laughs> Today airports are all about expansion they're getting larger and larger, and I'm almost, sorry. Uh, I want to reverse that condition, because I think they take on obscene dimensions and want to create a, a kind of a speed box in Virilio's term. Uh, in the beginning, I started, uh, I started stacking up airplanes, tilting them, getting them in a vertical manner, and figured out quickly that that won't bring me any further. I made some layout studies to figure out that, da, I have to put the terminal probably in the center of a two parallel runway. Uh, I come to that part later. Um, uh, definition of, for defining the actual spaces you need for uh, an airport, like from curbside till check-in desk and so on. I went on field studies and, and, uh, and did some research about the, the current size of spaces of, of in that time, uh, newly built airports. Uh, this, is a, this was Shanghai, we went to Shanghai and I checked the check-in hall and figured out that at the maximum peak capacity, uh, one passenger has 20, over 20 square meters of space in the check-in hall, uh, which I found a bit uh, wasteful. And I figured that the, the basic formula I found for my uh, endeavor was uh, the time determines space size. So the longer, uh, an op a longer a person is in a space, the, the larger the space has to be designed, which is a very simple formula but I also tried to apply it uh, not only to the people. Um, the time factor, if you look at the time factor, I was focusing on a short, uh, on, on short haul flights of a dense network because I thought that uh, the actual time we spent on the ground before and after the flight is often exceeding the actual flight time. And uh, I thought that the, you can make a huge difference if you take a total travel time of four hours and reduce it to two hours, it's a much bigger difference and step than you can make for a, a long-term flight because then if you fly 10 hours, it won't matter if you spend one hour longer in an airport or not. So, so I was focusing on a, on, a, on a short, dense network and uh, I said, okay, the, how do I uh, save space? I introduce motion and I, I get, instead of getting the passengers to the aircraft, I reverse and say, I bring the aircraft to the passengers and create a kind of a, a speed box. So getting in a plane should be more like you enter a train today. A lot of people mentioned already train station like uh, atmosphere. So this was my aim for. So I consumed all the Paul Virio books about speed and did a lot of uh, different typology studies. How could I fix? And then I thought I need a kind of a rule to help designing me this airport. So I, how do I play this. So I set up a system where every airplane drives with one kilometer per hour through a lane of around 400 meters. And it's like a platform of a train. You enter during motion in the arrival cases, then the machine gets cleaned and serviced, and then you uh, board the plane. And during that plane, drives through, uh, every service things happens to it. If you get back to the, this would be the showdown. One plane going through is around half an hour. And uh, this airport was set up, this is a prototype for Vienna. In Vienna we had at the time 90% short haul flights, 90% uh, small and medium airplanes, which means a Boeing 737 or an airplane, Airbus family 320. Um, and I stacked six lanes next to each other because if you assume for a, a parallel runway, a one landing plane per minute, which is actually already be, uh, shorter than the actual landing rate, the landing rate is 82 seconds, um, I would get six to 10 minutes time 
to get my airplane into the lane and to have it disappearing so the next one could come. Um, boarding and deplaning would take place with the, the regular boarding bridges. You know this from Dallas, maybe it's familiar. This, I hope they still are in service. I had the pleasure once to, to drive with them. Um, you just have to re make them more flexible and move them along the airplane. Um, you see on the left side static servicing, so you already have a lot of mobile gadgets attaching to the plane, so why not put them in order and run along the airplane? And this would be the building which emerged. I was very much interested in also the psychology. I was focusing purely on the passenger experience. That means that this airport had maybe some disadvantages in terms of uh, turnaround uh, stuff because you would have to move the bridges in a loop. But uh, I created a super hyper condensed airport which is stacked. The, all the traffic, the arriving traffic to the the arriving traffic to the, uh, the airport is in a cross direction. So what Tom mentioned before that you want to arrive at the plane and at the airport and you know already where your plane is. Here you could see already with uh, some information where you have to get out of the car in order to run down and catch your plane because it's like platform. So you know half an hour earlier where your plane is going to be attached. So I extrude an airplane by 400 meters and, and the building evolves around uh, like all the, the, the actions and the functions are attached to it. I developed two different prototypes, one for Vienna which is the top section uh, where we have a, a dead end uh, train station and the lower part could work for Amsterdam or, or uh, Heathrow where you have a real train station going through. I introduced a, a known platform for that. Here you see the passenger flow. Now that was the diploma. Uh, afterwards I went to, to work in reality and after I quit at UN Studio I started to, to take this on. I renamed it to Drive Through Airport and I told myself that it has to be more uh, serious. I have to get rid of the motion because that was the biggest challenge to, to enter in a moving plane. Now one kilometer per hour is like a, is a foot per second. So it's actually quite slow. If you've been skiing, you know that you have to take a ski lift and it's pretty similar from the speed. So um, also, in my opinion, flying is an extreme sport uh, because we, we tend to forget that we are in a, in a minus 50 degrees up there and it's, uh, the, the atmosphere is like on, at three kilometer height, so there's less air. So this is why we get maybe a bit uh, also dizzy sometimes in, when we fly and, and stress because it's not a normal condition. The aviation industry is making a huge effort to, to make us forget about that. And uh, I like transparency. I like to know what's going on. I don't like to be told that I should forget about it. I think this should be enhanced and, and the notion for it should be enhanced that people know what we actually create for them because it's an incredible achievement. Um, even though with all that, so I wanted to still have a, create a transparent building uh, and, and make a more serious uh, proposal out of it. Um, just a little side to the side performance. On the right side, this little thing there is around 400 meter wide and 200 meter long. And just a bit size comparison to Amsterdam and, and Heathrow. Now, how do you save distances at an airport? Um, by introducing sequencing and spatial separation of the services. So, if you look at the figures, you see already that uh, this is a figure of a turnaround of a 737. Uh, first of all, I introduce a second bridge because I I really want to urge airports to use both doors when you arrive at an airplane because this makes half of the time. This saves a lot of time. Anyways, uh, on the left side you see on the top, uh, you see deplaning, takes nine minutes, uh, unloading luggage. In the center you see the servicing, the fueling, and on the right side you see in blue the departing figures. Actually you see that you can recognize that there is already a, a a separation of these services. So I separate it also spatially. I create a, a terminal building which is divided into an arrival terminal and a departing terminal. 
And if you take a, a static airport on the top with a static gate, where a plane turns around in 45 minutes, in drive-through airport, within that 45 minutes, the plane is actually going through three pit stops. And this is the, this is the actual magic. After 15 minutes, my gate is cleaned out so the next plane can arrive. So I can handle three times the plane per gate than on a regular airport. And not only doing so, I can also line them up next to each other and in front of each other. So I don't have to line them up in one row and put the terminal ahead of it and, and uh, create vast spaces. Now I was still not satisfied with this layout because I thought this is still a bit too wide. Um, this prototype was also designed for a two parallel runway, which means that every 15 minutes, if I have 15 lanes, every 15 minutes I have to make space for the next plane coming. This is why I'm stacking up here 15 to 16 lanes. Now I thought I could, do, I could put two neighboring lanes in one lane because if I have two planes landing very close to each other, they will be able to move along all the way together. So by doing so, I can already double the amount of planes within one lane. Um, as you see, you don't have six stations, you have three stations, but you have two planes which are doing always moving parallel or in a one minute shift. So this would be the showdown. I hope this works. Oops. And the actual airport, the terminal building, is above lifted. So, do I have a lot of time yet, or five minutes? So I get to the performance assessment, because uh, I also handed in a, a proposal to the UK Airports Commission. And if you're interested, you can look at all this stuff online in more detail. Uh, performance assessment, I can, as you see, wipe out half of the infrastructure of Amsterdam and create and doubling while I'm doubling the the, the annual passenger numbers. Um, here again the comparison with the street with the one third of the of the amount of gates necessary again I can try to explain it if I have three static gates on the left side with a normal procedure uh, on the right side, I have dry through airport. At the same time, within this 135 minutes, I can handle nine airplanes. So if you apply that, for example, to, to Heathrow, then you see that I can reduce the entire airport to this, what you see on the right side. Further construction cost, I, uh, the green is dry through airport, and uh, the gray would be the, the London Heathrow Terminal 5. The only thing I would need a bit more is, is taking care of fire barriers. I tested in this UK airport's uh, paper, I tested different operation models and incident management. I get asked a lot of uh, questions, what happens if uh, a passenger doesn't show up and so on. I have all the answers for that, I'm happy to answer it afterwards. Um, if you look at the plan, it's it's uh, it's stackable, it's a modular thing, so you can add more lanes for more runways. You can, um, actually you don't really need to. So it's a, this is a very linear concept. On the, on the right side you see the bottom, which is the, where the whole underground services are going on. The green is the luggage. Before I explain this, I think I just show you the movie. The movie is self-explanatory. If it works.
And here I lay out a completely horizontal structure. There is, it's much calmer. It's much more, it's also for the passenger, it's a bit less stressful, super short ways. And uh, what's important with that building is that it takes con consideration all stakeholders. So it's not just the passenger. It revolutionizes the whole turnaround servicing infrastructure. So it's also good for airlines. They have less vulnerability with the planes. They have to taxi less. Um, it's for the airport also because they have less infrastructure to maintain. So I basically line up all the stakeholders and figure out that they all gain from this concept. Um, I'm welcome for critical questions afterwards. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah. Thank you.